Hi guys, I hope you're all having a lovely week. So you probably know from the title of this video that I'm actually gonna do a really different video today. I am going um, to talk about how you can deal with grief. Now, the reason is, is today's not Friday. Today I'm actually filming this on Tuesday the 19th, which is uh, marks the two years since my dad passed away. Um, so it's not going to be a makeup tutorial today, <laughs> I promise I'll be back like normal uh, next Friday with those. But the reason I'm doing this is because I was actually inspired by my friend, Clara Ampho, who's a Radio 1 DJ. And myself and Clara have been friends since we were 18, and about 11 months after my dad passed away, her darling dad uh, passed away as well. And she actually recorded on a podcast uh, the first year after her dad died. Um, and the podcast is called Running With Grief and I'll put the link below. And when I listened to it, it really helped me and it made me feel that, you know, you're not alone. And it made me feel, not better, but it made me feel like, okay. So when you've got a voice like Clara has and like, you know, I have to a certain point, um, I think that you should use it for good things. And if this can help even just one person who's going through any sort of grief now, then that means it is worth it. So my dad was called Lester. He was the most wonderful, charming, uh, lived life to the full man that you'll ever meet. <laughs> life of the party. The party didn't start till my dad arrived. <laughs> um, him and his dance moves were, you know, just excellent. <laughs> Typical dad dance, but he also loved music. So I always remember like his eclectic taste, like his fave was like Rod Stewart, Queen. And then he'd also love like Eminem and Jay-Z. So pretty cool as well. And also very random. And you know, my dad like, like, loved his friends, loved his family, he lived for his friends and family and just was the most incredible man and I was very very close to him and I'm the eldest of um, six so as the eldest we had kind of a special bond, we all did, we all had very wonderful bonds with my dad, we all got very very, you know, adored him. We used to meet every two weeks in London for lunch just to like catch up and usually end up on happy hour, buy one, get one free on drinks. That was always, always interesting. And I'd speak to my dad like every other day on the phone, if not every day. He would be the man I would go through, go to if I had a bad day at work and I'd phone him and tell him all about it and then it would all be okay. Or if I needed to know what shelf to buy for the house, he'd know. Anything I needed to know, dad had the answer. So it's been really kind of difficult not having that. Um, but you know, it's two years today, like I say, and that is significant in so many ways, because two years is a long time. If you think about what you've done in the past two years, that's a really long time. But to me, it feels like two minutes since dad's been gone, and some days it feels like 20 years. Like, ultimately, it is significant, but at the same time, it's not, because it doesn't matter how long it's been, he's still not here, and I just think that I'll always remember April the 19th, I'll always remember it because that is the day that he went. But at the same time, he's always here with me, he's always here. And when you lose someone, because ultimately we're all going to lose people in our life because actually death is really the only guaranteed thing that we have in life. Um, when you lose someone, what we have to remember is that we are who we are because of the way the people that we surround ourselves with and the people that we love the way that they kind of affect our lives. We are who we are because of those people that we surround ourselves with. And that's really important to know. And that's taken me these two years really to realize it. Because I'm so like dad. God, actually, I remember at dad's uh, funeral, which was not horrendous. I thought it was gonna be horrendous, but actually it was, there was, oh God, I don't know, hundreds of people couldn't even fit into the um, crematorium. We couldn't even fit in there. And everyone wore colourful clothes because we'd asked them to. And we're not religious at all. So um, rather than do any hymns, we sung Dad's favourite song, which is Maggie May by Rod Stewart. And everyone's singing that. That was really amazing. And actually, um, talking of that song, <laughs> there's been so many times where it's come on the radio for me and my brothers and sisters when we're thinking about Dad. Because even though I'm not religious... I believe that there is something out there because obviously there, is, there has to be, right? Because we, how do we get here? I mean, it's just also, you know, no one's ever going to have the answer, but too many things have happened where I feel like, oh God, I was definitely dad that did that. And Maggie Mae coming on this radio, whenever I'm thinking about him, is kind of one thing. 
And actually, talking of the Rod Stewart thing, um, last year, me and Theo went to Vegas for our friend's wedding, and we drove into Vegas, and the Bellagio fountains were on, and they were singing Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, like, and actually, my sister Lucy's named after that song, so that was one thing that happened, and then Rod Stewart was playing at Caesar's Palace, and my friend Kaz had phoned, and gone, oh my god, Lisa, Rod is playing there, you have to get tickets, you're going to be in Vegas, he's there for one week, and it's the week that you're there, but the tickets were, like, crazy expensive, and we just paid for this trip, so we couldn't afford it, but then all my friends were like, it's fine, we're going to pay for it, you're going, so I phoned my friend Kerry and Kaz, whose wedding we were going to in Vegas and said, right, we're going to get these tickets. I'm going to get them sent to your house because it's cheaper than getting them to sent to us. And then Kerry said, let me phone you back in a minute. And she phoned me back and she said, right, don't worry. I've got you free tickets through my friend who's the events manager at Caesars Palace. And we're like, oh my God, that is amazing. So fast forward to the night. Um, and we were like 20 rows from the front, which was also like insane. Anyway, I've always been brought up on like Rod Stewart. So I didn't, this sounds maybe silly, but I didn't realise that Maggie May was like his most famous song. I just thought it was like my dad's favourite song. <laughs> um, so it got through and I was really, me and Theo were there and dancing away and it was amazing. But he hadn't played Maggie May. And I was kind of like getting a bit upset because I was like, oh God, what if he doesn't play it? And then obviously the encore happened and it was Maggie May. And actually as the encore started and, and we started to hear this, And I knew that obviously this is Maggie May, and that was going to be his encore. But wake up, Maggie! I think I got something to say to you. It's late September, and I really should be back in school. So as um. Rod was singing this, he started to walk around the theatre and literally as he got to me, I was like, Rod, selfie! <laughs> and the band was still playing around him and he was like, alright, <laughs> pulled his mic down, took a selfie with me and then carried on singing Maggie May. I mean, come on. That for me was my dad, and that's not the only thing that's happened. There's been loads that's going on. So I, you know, I, I always truly believe that they're here with us, and that gives me so much comfort. So I also count myself quite lucky that dad died very suddenly. Uh, he didn't know he was going to die. Apparently, he didn't feel any pain, which is, you know, very comforting to me and my family because he was actually the fittest that he'd been for ages because he was doing this like 300 mile plus bike ride around Europe for charity. So he actually passed away whilst he was riding his bike. Um, he was on a training session and um, it was his heart and his heart just stopped and you've got to think about it like your heart is a machine really and it runs your body and it's like you know if that stops then that's it like that and he wasn't in any pain like I say and I lost my granddad six years ago and he died of cancer and god that was horrendous because actually you see the pain you see it and that's what you remember um and you shouldn't remember that about that person. It's hard not to when you have something like cancer. But I remember my dad as my dad. And I remember the last conversation I had with him on the Friday where it was full of love and happiness and everything and told him about my book and it was just amazing. So I feel really lucky as well. So everyone deals with grief completely differently really and you have completely different feelings. So. At the beginning, I, and I still do now every now and again, you have this, that I had this uncontrollable crying. I'd never experienced anything like it. Like, I'm a strong person. Um, I pride myself on being a really positive person as well. And I really like Dad live my life to the max because I think that's really, really important. And it was like these tears, they just wouldn't stop. And I couldn't breathe. And I used to just, this pain in my chest that just like take hold of me. And sometimes it would last for two minutes. Sometimes it would last for like, nearly two hours and I'm really just amazingly lucky to have Theo because he understands because um, Theo lost both his parents by the time he was 20 both from illness and um, so so tragic um, and he just knew whether to sit there or to hold me or to just kind of let me cry or he just he just knew he just knew so I was really lucky um, but I also felt stupid a bit for crying like that. I felt like silly. I felt like, why am I crying like this? For God's sake, like, snap yourself out of it. But it's fine. 
you have to let it out you got to so if you do feel like that at any point then that's okay and actually it's good for your soul to cry like that it's good for your soul to let it all out um so don't hold it back and what i'd say now is that that probably happens to me like every kind of i don't know six weeks two months you know i never know when it's going to happen sometimes it's because a song comes on the radio or i'm watching something on tv or I'm just frustrated because I need the answer to something and I know my dad would have been able to give it to me in, in two minutes rather than me trying to search for it for two hours, you know. It can be the real smallest, smallest thing. It can be I'm walking past someone and they're wearing dad's aftershave. Or I'm walking past someone and I get really bloody angry because I'm thinking, that man's my dad's age. You know, he looks about 55. He's in a suit, but he's fine. Why is he here? Why is he here and my dad not? And then I feel guilty because I'm like, of course he should be here. For God's sake, there's people that love him out awful of me to even say something or think something like that so there's so many things that go through and so many emotions but the difference is now two years on is that the tears are always behind my eyes they're always there they can come at any time but they stay put a lot more <laughs> than they used to and I think about dad every single day every day without failure and it could be thinking about him just for like 10 seconds in like when you know when you're going like to a dream like state you know and you're like just thinking I could just think about them or it could be like really intense I just can't sleep because I'm thinking about him or it could be I dreamed about dad and actually actually me and my brothers and sisters actually sometimes have the same dreams about dad which is really weird and you know but all of that's okay that's the thing that's all right they're always going to be here with us they're always going to be like in your mind you're always going to be thinking about them you're never going to forget about them and I'm sure you know in another two, three, four years, who knows when, I might not think about dad every day. It might be every other day because, you know, with granddad, I think about granddad probably like three or four times a week rather than every day like I used to. And that's fine as well. And you know what the thing is that I think is that staying positive is one of the hardest things when you lose someone. But that's what you've got to do. That's what you've got to do because it's no one's fault. This has just happened. It happens. It's going to happen again at some point in our lives to you know we're going to lose other people that we love and that is awful to think about but the biggest thing that you can do is live your life every single day don't complain about small things don't worry about small things get out there and live it and be positive and be full of energy and you know think to yourself right if you think to yourself i want to do something do it do it you're only ever going to regret the things that you didn't do and i think that's the most important thing that i've learned I'm really scared of dying now, and I never used to be scared of dying. Like, I never, ever, it didn't even cross my mind. But since Dad died, I've kind of like, I'm a, I am really scared of that. But also that drives me then to do things that I want to do. Because I think, you know, we don't know if tomorrow's going to come. We just don't know. No one knows. So don't wait till tomorrow, just do it. And, you know, if there's been something that you've been thinking about, oh, you know, should I, shouldn't I? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would say. And also, don't forget about phoning those people and telling them that you love them. Um, it was really amazing today because I posted a picture of Dad on Instagram just to say, you know, how much I miss him. And I won't mention a name, but someone that I don't know um, wrote a message saying, you've just made me phone my dad after three years. I haven't spoke to him for three years, and this has just made me phone him and ask him if he's all right and how he is. And I thought, God, that was the most powerful thing that I've heard for a long time. And that made me think, wow... I've affected that one person and made it that person that person's made a change because of that post that I just did. So if this video can help any of you, I just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Right now it might feel like it's not going to be all right. And right now it's the most painful thing that you've ever been through. But life gives us these things and we just have to make sure we push through for that person because they're always here and they're part of us. And I know I am who I am because of my dad. I know, I know that. I know I'm like my dad. I know my stubbornness and my chicken legs and my impatientness is because of my dad. But I also know that my lust for life is because of dad. So take that and embrace it and just enjoy life really. I don't really know what else to say. So phone your dad. Phone your mum, phone your friend, phone your family. If they're there now, pick up the phone, tell them you love them. Because I can't do that anymore and that's all I desire. It's just one, one last phone call, one last hug would be like, I'd give up everything for that. Give up everything. So, 
if they are here with you, do it. Call them. Let them know you love them. And um, I'll be back next Friday, as normal, without these tears. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Loads of love.